Hello and welcome back to yet another Mech Deck Tech. We have another pre-con upgrade guide for you from Dustmorn featuring Jump Scare, helmed by Zamone Mystery Unraveler. So Zamone is a 3-3 four cost Simic Commander with Landfall. A little bit of a twist though. So whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you're going to manifest dread if it's the first time it happened. Otherwise, you're going to get to flip over one of your cards for free. So, you could do a lot of things with this stack. We're obviously trying to abuse landfall effects, playing multiple lands a turn, or, if we're able to, kind of playing a single land for a few turns in a row to get a couple manifested things out there, and then flipping them all at once. So, let's get to the game plan, right? Bunch of extra lands, some extra landfall triggers, and uh, hopefully winning from there. As always, we're going to go ahead and cut 10 cards that don't quite fit, add in 10 cards to up that synergy and lead us to victory. Let's get started. First card on the chopping block is Shigeki Junkai Visionary. So this is a 1-3 for 2. You can pay 1 and a green to tap them and return them to your hand. Go ahead and basically look at the top 4. Technically, they are revealed. Yeah, we're going to reveal the top 4 cards. Put a land from among them onto the field tapped it puts the rest in grave uh, I felt like if we were doing more of a reanimator strat Shigeki gets to hang out it's not so much what we're doing here reanimator is more of a uh, a black wedge sort of thing and in Simic we're just we don't have access to as much of it we could have also channeled them from our hand the channel is admittedly a little expensive right double X double green we discard them, return X target non-legendary cards from grave to hand, uh, which is our non-legendary cards from grave to hand, which is cool, uh, but ultimately unnecessary. I know that we could like play them, do a bunch of mill, bounce them back to hand, da 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 da. But I feel like we have better ways of getting this kind of effect off, and better ways of honestly just getting more lands into play more quickly. So I'm happy to let them go. So Tunnel Hero Fonts is going to follow that up. They're, they are a 3-2 for 4 mana, so not great, honestly. They do make it so all of our creatures tap for green mana, which is cool, uh, but ultimately kind of whatever in this deck in my mind. Rashmi Eternity's Crafter is up next. They are another 4 cost, 2-3. So body per cost, not great. Whenever we cast the first spell each turn, we're going to reveal the top card of our deck. If it happens to cost less than the spell we've already cast, we get to cast it for free. Otherwise, we get to draw it, and I think it's a fine card. Um, you know, it does some things in some decks, but I think for a deck like this where we're probably playing an above average number of lands, we're going to be hitting a ton of lands off of this. And like, sure, adding the lands to our hand is cool, but I think we could do better, you know, so we're going to go ahead and cut them. Kefnet the Mindful. So this is actually a great body, right, for cost. 5-5, five, five, flying, indestructible for 3 mana. Now granted, it can't attack or block until we have 7 or more cards in hand. And we could pay 4 mana to draw a card. But in doing so, we have to also return a land we control to its center's hand. Uh, so checks and balances. Uh, but ultimately, I just felt like, you know, we could do better once again. Greater Tanuki, 6 cost, 6-5 six, Trample. We could channel them to go get a basic, put it in the field tapped. Uh, again, we have better ramp in green. And yeah, a 6-5 Trample body on the field is fine, but again, you know, it's just not great. Scab, Ruinator. So Scab is a 3 cost, 5-6, so again, excellent body. On the other, other hand... We do need to exile three creature cards from our own grave in order to cast them. Uh, and we could cast them from the grave. And I know that we're doing Manifest Red, right? So we are going to be filling our grave to an extent. But three creatures have to be exiled to even get them. You know, I just, again, feel like we could do a little better than that. Beanstalk Giant. So Beanstalk Giant's actually a little bit of a tough cut for us. You know, they are a ramp card followed by a big boy. If that big boy also came with trample or any kind of evasion, ways to really ensure we're dealing damage, 
I'd probably keep them. But as they stand, I'm happy to just, like, honestly have a cultivate or, you know, a vegetative explosion. You know, something along those lines. This next one might come as a shock. It's a growth spiral. Uh, so we get the draw a card, put a land from our hand on the battlefield. Uh, it's fine. It's not anything that, like, is going to blow anything out of the water, right? We're not having a, an amazing turn because we played a growth spiral. And we have better things to replace it with, so again, it's fine to cut. Keiru Spell Snatcher. Four costs, three, three that we could morph. And yeah, with our commander, we could flip them for free. Uh, whenever it's turned face up, we get to counter a spell. If the spell was countered this way, we basically exile it and we get to cast it for as long as it remains exiled. Uh, ultimately, we're not playing a ton of lands to force a flip on an opponent's turn, so we really need to have the six man up to flip them. And I don't want to pay six mana to counter a spell, right? It's not good value. I know that we're potentially getting that spell for free, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, holding up six mana for the opportunity to counter a spell that we then get to play ourselves just doesn't feel great. Uh, so they're cut. And the last of our ten cuts is Eureka Moment. So this is a four-cost instant spell. We get to draw two, put a land from our hand on the battlefield. Kind of feels uh, really similar to Growth Spiral. It's a little more cards, same number of lands, uh, and twice the mana. So I'm kind of fine with making those cuts and moving us right along into our additions. So starting us off, we of course have Azusa Lost But Seeking. Two additional lands, right? That means first land, manifest drag. Second land, go ahead and flip over one of our face downs. Third land, another face down flip, plus a bunch of extra landfall triggers. So Azusa and a landfall deck just makes sense. Conduit of Worlds. So Conduit of Worlds lets us play lands from our grave with the manifest dread happening. You know. And the fact that we're doing a landfall kind of deck means that I think we're going to be manifesting a lot of decent creatures and dreading a bunch of lands. So the fact that we're going to be able to recur them later is just icing on the cake. Green Belt Radical. Uh, so Green Belt Radical, super budget. This is like pennies to pick up. Four costs, four, four. You could disguise it, right? We do want to have a few ways of putting other things face down. Uh, but when they're turned face up, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each of our creatures, and those creatures are all going to gain trample for the turn. So, a nice way to kind of be like, yep, played two lands, I flipped them over, my whole field got a little bigger, and they're all trampling now. Uh, I'm just going to swing for face. Of course, we're rocking the Ancient Green Warden, because the Ancient Green Warden is rocking with us. This is a six cost, five, seven. Find enough body, it does have reach, a little icing on that cake. We get to, again, play lands from the grave, and we're doubling landfall triggers. So, you know, we're loving it each and every time. Secret Plans. Uh, so Secret Plans is actually kind of interesting tech. So, super budget again. You know, it's like 12 to like 50 cents. You know, but super budget, you're going to pick it up with no issues. Cynic mana to get it out. Buffs our face down creatures' booties a little bit, but more importantly, whenever a permanent we control is turned face up, we're gonna draw a card, right? Keep that handful. Panoptic projector. So this is a four-cost artifact. We could pay. We could tap it down rather. The next face down creature spell we cast is gonna cost three less. We do have a few things that we could disguise and morph and whatnot in the deck, so a little relevant. But really here for that second ability, which is that if we Flip up a permanent, if it triggers an ability, the ability triggers twice, right? Basically a panharmonicon for our flips, and we're here for it. Become Anonymous. So this is actually from the Assassin's Creed set. This is a four-cost instant. We're going to basically choose a creature we control in the field, exile it, add the top two cards of our library into exile with it, shuffle them face down, and then cloak all of them. They will enter tapped. So there aren't great blockers, you know, from the cloak, but that's okay. 
we effectively get to have three things be face down, and then the next turn, when we play four lands in a turn, it could happen. We're going to flip them all over. Print Lifter Ooze. So this is a Death Touching 2-2 two, two for two. Whenever it or another creature we control is turned face up, we get to create a 0-0 zero, zero Ooze, but the Ooze is actually a Trampoly XX, where X is the number of other creatures we control. So... At the very least, it's always a 1-1, right? Because the Print Lifter Ooze itself would have been flipped, and we had no other creatures in the field. But in my experience, playing some other morph decks, you know, it's always much larger than that. And these oozes have Trample. So, ton of damage to go ahead and throw around, and really keep our board at a pretty consistent state of, you don't want to come over here, the clapback will kill you. Following up that print lifting ooze, we have Experiment 12. So a 4-4 four, four Trampler for 4 mana. Whenever it or another creature is turned face up, we effectively double its power via plus one plus one counters. So Experiment 12, if done properly and cheated, you know, the, we could even cheat the cost with our landfall triggers with the commander, is actually an 8-8. Uh, if we have that projector from earlier, uh, they're going to go ahead and the ability will trigger twice, right? So they'll actually end up being a 16-16 trample that we maybe set face down for three mana. Uh, we maybe just got them off a of landfall. Either way, it's great, right? You can't beat that value. And the last of our additions for this deck is Vanifar Evolved Enigma. So... Another interesting card, pretty budget, sits around like the 50 cent to a dollar range. Four mana, three, four, beginning of combat, we get to choose one. We could cloak a card from our hand, or we could put a plus one, plus one counter on each colorless creature we control. Both effects are great, right? Oh, we're cloaking extra stuff so that we can flip more stuff. Oh, you know, all of our things that are still face down, well, guess what? Those are colorless creatures. They're all getting bigger. You know, so I feel like both effects really rock. They're doing the work that we want them to. We actually do have a number of decent considerations, honorable mentions, for the deck. I'm gonna kind of rapid fire them, but it's a lot of stuff that's more landfall triggers, you know, more morph style effects, things of that nature. More ways of playing extra lands. Inoc, Survivalist, Den Protector, Eternal Witness, Evolution Witness, even better. Hauntwood's Shrieker. Hooded Hydra. Kodama of the East Tree. We love that landfall trigger. It's not technically a landfall trigger, but it's effectively a landfall trigger enhancer. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Explore. Hide in Plain Sight. Of course, Crucible of Worlds. Cryptic Coat. Scroll Rack and Sensei's Divining Top to really modify the top of our deck for that Manifest Dread. Exploration, and we don't typically touch on lands, but Branch of Vitu Ghazi, which is a land that we could disguise, uh, so that's nice. But guys, that is the deck tech for Jump Scare, you know? Were there cards that I cut that I shouldn't have, cards that I'm missing, you know, from my upgrade guide that remain relatively budget? Definitely let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, felt like you got some value out of it, don't forget to like the video, comment, you know, Subscribe if you haven't, ring that bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. As always, I am Mechanized Minion, a.k.a. The Energy King, wishing you good luck with your builds.